and gentlemen, a man who needs no introduction. Well, 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 well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, is there anybody here who doesn't know who this man is? Okay, I'm with you, Roy. <laughs> <laughs>
Black Cat basically just said, yeah, fine, we've got 60,000, you can have them. <laughs> Bother, what are we going to do with these? <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to put them in a mention there. I mean, the fact that somebody in Plymouth City Gallery had to sit down and read the risk assessment. <laughs> Get it. They did. This is a document that only lasted for 22 pages <laughs> and did not mention the one thing that went a little um, interesting. <laughs> See, I, these guys are brilliant. Um, seriously, they they organise some huge displays and they also do little things like weddings. So if anybody's getting married, having a bar mitzvah or whatever. Uh, these guys are brilliant, they live up to their name. Um, and they are a great team, and even better, for the day, I was an honorary team member. They was done at the final. They fade, but, but they fed me as well. <laughs> so anyway, right. So, uh, and, oh, finally, yes. <laughs> if I'm honest, uh, and why not, these guys did the vast majority of the work. They paid these guys to do the vast majority well, They paid some. They didn't even cover costs, but these guys did pay some money. They brought all the money in, for, well, they brought all the fireworks in. Um, yeah, right, fine. Okay. So, one W gone. Let's go to the next W. Okay, now, you need to know what you're tangling with. Now, the previous record was set up eight years before we actually started thinking about this. Um, a mere 39,210 rockets launched simultaneously, and it was live on record breakers! Wonderful. Um, the guy that did it was a guy called Terry McDonald, who's known, known in Jersey's pyro pops. I think he's just coming up to his 70th birthday. Um, and he's a great character, in fact, as soon as he found out I was going to try and break his record, he's like, yeah, go on, like miles over the top, really do it, you know. Um, oh, no, no, don't do it that way, do it this way, don't worry, no, don't even try that way. No. Uh, it was great, and we had various uh, phone conversations and emails, uh, and he was really quite annoyed that on the day he couldn't get hold of me, just to find out how it's going. Um, it was like a kid on the other end of the phone, that's it, that's it, have you done this, have you done that, have you done that, have you done that? Anyway. Oh. As soon as you come to oh Guinness. <laughs> right, let's let's get one thing absolutely clear cut. Guinness World Records is absolutely nothing to do with the, from uh, with the people who separated the white stuff from the black stuff. Right. They have, the, the, the two firms were set up by the same person. In fact, Guinness World Records was started up because the guy that started up Guinness Brewers was having a golf round and he's, the guy who was playing whacked the ball and he went miles. And he reckon, I reckon that's the, the, uh, the guy who whacked the ball, so I reckon that's the furthest golf ball ever got. <clears throat> well, how would you find out? I don't know. There must be somebody that who keeps sort of stupid records like that somewhere. Two years later, Guinness World Records was actually born. Um, Start the book, now it's the book of the TV series, of the t shirt, of the chewing gum, of the yeah, whatever. Um, basically, they reside in London, and you cannot talk to a human being. There is a reason for this. The vast majority of the uh, people who contact them along the lines of, um, how shall we say, I think I've got the largest member on the planet. Or, um, uh, I can snort spaghetti further than anybody else. Great, fine, please get lost, you know. <laughs> so what they do is they have this website, and they hide behind this website, apart from a, um, a receptionist who answers the phone, that will make the average Rottweiler sound <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hello, what do you want? Uh, I wonder if I can speak to you. No. <laughs> no, wait, no, I was just wondering, no. I was, no. <laughs> Are you having a nice day? No. <laughs> Look, it's really urgent. Fine. So I was wondering if I... No. <laughs> On one occasion I spoke to a real person at Guinness World Records. She was in the loo. <laughs> and somebody else picked up the phone. Um, Guinness had come up at the time with a set of rules. 
Now, this is actually cut and pasted from the document he sent to me. That worried me immediately. So I phoned up the guy in Jersey and he went, What? No. So I went to the website, clicked this, clicked that, put this number in, put my password in there, put my inside leg measurement in there, and eventually got to the box that says put your messages in. And basically they phoned me and said, oh no, 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 really what that just says is use ordinary fireworks. Okay? Now they should buy these things called cakes where you light one fuse and you've got a three minute display. Yeah? Not allowed to use those. They've got to be individual fireworks. Why doesn't he just say, must use individual rockets? Okay. Mm. Now that's not the Oxford English Dictionary uh, definition of simultaneous. <laughs> yeah? Um, now, this one turned out to be a bit of a problem, but we'll come to that later. But basically, you've got to push a button, and they're all going to go off straight away. Third one. No worries. You'll notice that they've got to, to be designed to reach a, a minimum altitude of 30 inches. 100 feet, not money. Thank goodness for that. Um, at one point, the press were asking whether or not I was going to set up a washing line and video the rockets going past this washing <laughs> line, which was a. 30 metres up! <laughs> I mean, admittedly, your smalls are going to dry a lot faster than the altitude. But, I mean, come on! <laughs> you know. Um, I, yeah, okay, fine, we won't go there. Next W. Hopefully. Always here to go. Right, it's, I'm going to try and go through things in chronological order, which doesn't quite work. So, the first thing that really happened was on the 17th of August, which, if you cast your mind back, no, you're not even that sad, no. Uh, they have been the second day of the Firework Championships last year. <laughs> Here's the scene. I am sat at my office desk in Portland Square, if you have gone down North Hill. Yeah, those three ice cubes just behind the church. I'm in the middle ice cube at the top. And uh, it's a nice day. It's, in fact, it has been officially declared as summer in Plymouth. It is the day when the sun is shining. <laughs> I have a stack of paperwork. Boy, do I love paperwork. I love screwing it up in a ball and chucking it in the bin. It really bugs me. I hate paperwork. <laughs> anyway. You should have pointed at the end. Some of my students know me as the windmill anyway. <laughs> uh, I claim it's an orphan. Careful, attack. don't point at it. <laughs> you join us for a meeting? Oh, I love meetings too. Paperwork versus meeting. Ooh, it's 50 50. <laughs> well, mind you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Drink coffee in a meeting and make me sleep more. Um, okay, fine. I said, well, when? About an hour's time. It's not looking too good. Where? On Mount Batten Pier. Paperwork versus get on the water taxi across to Mount Batten in the warm sunshine. Have a meeting whilst eyeing up all the world's largest fireworks! <laughs> oh, it was tough. It was really <laughs> tough. But eventually I thought, well, I'll go to the meeting, the paperwork after that. <coughs> so we went out to this meeting, and basically there was, um, I think it was just three or four of us there. Um, the guy from the council said, look, it's the 10th anniversary of Firework Championships. Really want to make it big. We know you've had contacts with Guinness in the past. What could we go for? So we've got to go for something that's already set, because it's easy that way. The rules are set, you know. Um, and from my previous contacts that I'd been trying to do something, which I never quite came to fruition, I knew that standard fireworks were in if it was the biggest number of anything. Now, the guy from Tessa who was there said, Nice try. Tessa, um, fantastic, been, uh, let's try and get it right. Standard have been taken over by Black Cat. Uh, there's been so many phone calls and what have you. The guy that actually now runs Standard stroke Black Cat uh, has barred his phone completely. No one can actually get hold of it. Oh. There was a big grin, said, except for half a dozen numbers, and one of them's mine. He gets out his mobile. <coughs> Martin! Hi, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, we're thinking of going for a world record next year. Part of the final championship. Rocket. How many are mine? Uh, 40,000. We'll be needing a few more. 40,000! Oh, thanks, Martin. Yeah, we've got 60,000 rockets. Now, what do we do with them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just float this 
idea, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice idea, but no. And all of a sudden, we've got 60,000 rockets. I'll be mother still waiting for you. Oh dear. Better try this. Anyway, so the attempt was supposed to be at, on, wait, well, what's on the second night of the Barber Championships? Um, oh, I can't remember what that Oh, yeah, so, you know, we set everything up for that, and uh, in fact, there was a very little work done beforehand, apart from me, who started getting into worry mode. So, I don't want to be fantastic. So, yeah, we made these frames. Um, they're four foot square, and we got 15 of them. Went into scientist mode, come, out comes the right? Four foot square, and uh, that means the area of the frame is there, there, there. multiply by 15, there, there, there. divide by 60,000, roughly. That's two rockets per square inch! <laughs> <laughs> What's the phone number, fantastic? Glenn? Yes? Um, I've just worked out, that's two rockets per square inch. I'm going to open little rockets. What are we going to do? Stick it in with a sledgehammer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be all right, he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, thanks. Okay. Fine, so. We went with 15 frames. Four foot square. Mm, okay. <laughs> the this was a real problem to me. Because what they decided to do was announce that we're going to have the contract for the next six years of pilot championships, about six months beforehand. Then they dribble out to the media that we'd done, um, because it was the 10th anniversary, there'd be eight displays rather than six, and the amount of gunpowder that each of the mess we could use would go from 300 kilos up to 500 kilos. And then the icing on the cake was going to be, oh, by the way, just don't slip this in, we're after all the record. And that was to be one month beforehand. Now, this is all very well, but I had a great idea. I thought, look, I work at a university. I need hands. I've got loads of students. <laughs> I can't tell them <laughs> until they've all gone home. <laughs> Eventually, what I ended up doing was using graduates of mine. Yay! Got to scrape the barrel sometimes, but we don't. <laughs> Actually, bless it, I, I originally thought, I know, what I'll do is I'll, because we need counters. I mean, Guinness wants to know how many are there beforehand, then you push the button, and then you want to know how many are there after. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get a calculator out, it's like, ooh, difficult maths, you know? I thought, hmm, who's up to this challenge? I know. <laughs> Secondary school maths teachers. Yeah? Great. They're up, they're not working during the summer, they can come and give me a hand, then they can sort of saunter into school and say, Ah oh, yes, maths boys and girls, you are used to hate it, you think it's of no use whatsoever. Well, I can tell you, I helped out with the world record. So I sent out the fax to every single school in the area. I only got one reply. Hello, it's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance of just a technician helping out? Well, uh, since nobody else would like to uh, we had to keep the location a secret because the last thing you want is a load of people who want to get in on the media frenzy when you've got, when we calculated it, around about 250 kilos of just gunpowder on the side. <laughs> we actually had a, a smidgen of uh, slightly under one tonne of fireworks. <laughs> yeah, and when you see just how small the space and how many people we had in there, yeah, it's a good job nobody smoked. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is a, an aerial photograph of Mountbatten. Here's the pier where you know we had all the uh, displays going off from. Uh, if you know the area, the Mountbatten Hotel's here. This is the water sports centre. There's the tower. Dirty great lump of earth. Uh, and in fact, okay, here's the car park. This is a gravel car park. We actually set up the rockets here, uh, and then we we had the media over here. And of course they kept creeping this way. <laughs> but as you'll see, not, there was a time when they decided to creep the other way. But. <laughs> so it's just a gravel car park. Now actually this turned out to be an ideal place because um, the vast majority of the, I think it works out, about 20,000 people turned up to see this, along with all the fireworks. We're over in this direction. Should anything go wrong, we've got a barrier between us and them. <laughs> yeah? I mean, you know, if they start getting unruly and start throwing beer bottles, we're all right, basically. Um, so that was the idea. Equally, this was a, um, this served as a bit of a, a windshield, which we were very grateful during the day, because we had, most of the time had northeast, which is the last thing we wanted. 
right. Oh, and driving right. Sorry, talking about the uh, media. Yes. There was, I, was, I was standing back near the entrance to the car park and BBC had their camera. And ITV said, we well, move forward. I'm moving my camera forward, at least so next to it. And then there was a busy contest between the two camera crews. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Karen. I'm off the bar. <laughs> I still owe you one for doing some work. Um, right. Okay then. Now we've done who, what, when, where. We did the work. Always trying to keep your notes in the right order. It helps. Right. Okay. <laughs> Garbage. It's not true. But when all the media turn up and say, why are you doing this? You can't turn around and say, well, actually, the only reason we're going for a world record is because we want you lot here. <laughs> yeah, it's bait, to be quite honest, to try and get the media in. Now, for instance, Plymouth Pl Pl City Council were very clear with me. They just wanted to make sure that Plymouth appeared in national newspapers for once, for a good reason. <laughs> 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 yeah? And they were willing to pay to get column inches, essentially. They didn't end up paying very much, which you've got to do. Yeah, well, Trade Association, that's their job, you know, fine. They're actually quite miffed. <laughs> what happened was, uh, we got loads of coverage and they said, mm, oh, well, by the way, there was a fire which actually did work. Thank you for <laughs> they were they, Their nose was um, slightly out of joint at times. <laughs> It is true, but the main reason for doing this is simply because I get fed up with... I think I've got you lot converted, yeah? If you... I have a funny idea now, if you think of scientists, you might think of me. And you might actually talk to me. But I do meet people, and, you know, I say to them, oh, I teach chemistry and sort of go, there's an interesting guy over there that collects Boy Scout badges. Oh. <laughs> oh, I could never do that. Yeah. So I'm really quite... I'm trying to improve the image of science and scientists, and if it means blowing things up, well, I'll blow things up. <laughs> and if somebody turns around to you and says, you know, we want to do a firework world record, would you mind pressing the button? Mm -hmm. You don't think for very long. <laughs> you do ask one question. How big's the button? <laughs> very small. Okay. Who, what, when, where, why, the six W's in journalism. <laughs> Seriously, worry. <laughs> right, this is where it gets interesting. Ish. Okay. Now, we did have to actually inspect and prepare all these rockets. They were, in fact, about four or five years old. And just within these four walls, we were actually taking stand in a, a paper. These were the mini rockets that were banned about four years ago because teenagers were making them themselves because they were small wood sheets and pilots and firing a great window or whatever. So the government banned them. So they're not available for sale, but you can still buy them. But you just can't buy or sell them. So they've got 60,000 rockets sat in a, a silo up at, at uh, Huddersfield, taking up valuable space. I mean, if you are storing rockets or any firework, it has to be under certain categories and what have you. And basically it's expensive to store. I think we're already storing them for four years, trying to think what the heck to do with them. And then somebody comes up and says, have you got any rockets? Yeah. It's a safe disposal. <laughs> <laughs> it's an environmentally friendly way of disposing of the <laughs> uh, I didn't actually get, I got half, no, I got more. I must have got about a dozen snotty emails, you know, how dare you pollute the atmosphere. I, don't, uh, I just turned around and said, well, fine, the alternative is to soak these things in water, which means you get uh, nitrate out of the gunpowder. It's the nitrate that basically turns barbecue charcoal in something that goes back. A bit different. Well, at least when I'm on a barbecue, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about yours, but if you're going to run one like that, let me know and I'll wander off. Um, so you get that out, I and mean, then if you like, you can chuck that, you know, down the loo or whatever, and it ends up in the river, and all of a sudden the algae will go, yummy! <laughs> <laughs> Not good! What are you going to do with the wet cardboard and the charcoal? Oh, so I suppose you stick it in the landfill. At which point it turns out to be methane, which is a greenhouse gas par excellence. No, set lights are much better. 
Um, now, the poor pigs have been fantastic. What they didn't know until the lorry arrived and they opened them was these things were ready packed into packets of five. In that sort of thick plastic that's really. And it takes half an hour and you know. Alright? The other thing is, they've all got a. They've got a. a no, I've got a problem this. It's standard. Yeah, it's a standard fuse on a standard rocket because they're made by standard. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, which means they've got the little twist of tissue paper on the bottom. That's going to slow things down. And we've got a five second rule. <laughs> two women spent 80 hours each. Right? Two weeks, 40 hours. And all they did was break open a cardboard box, take out a pack of five. The fight's classic! <laughs> <laughs> Pick up rockets from the floor. Pick up the cardboard box. Do the whole thing. That's what they did for a week. The following week, they broke open the cardboard box they sealed the week before, take out rocket, carefully tear off the tissue paper around the bottom, and put it into the cardboard box. There's only, well, not quite 60,000 came down, around about 58,000, and a couple of those, a couple of thousand of those were used for test firings, but that's what they did for two weeks. They turned up on the day as well, being really infused. There's some very strange people there. Um, they prepared these frames to actually hold them. I mean, I did have loads of jokes of, you know, we're going to get 60,000 milk bottles. <laughs> Which I think really does say something about the age of the people who do some reporting. <laughs> yeah? Um, now, if these things look like this. Basically, this is a cross-section, so you've got... It's very technical, this. Chipboard. Actually, big, big chips board, okay? Squares. Uh, and then two layers of chicken wire. I don't know if you come across the stuff, but to be specialist, but there you go. Um, and then to actually set them off, we put in a layer of what's known as quick match. It's actually three strips of this stuff. This can be best described as gunpowder in a paper tube. How about that diameter? Because it's confined inside the paper tube, the flame runs at around about 25 meters a second. It does not hang around. You know, this is not the sort of gunpowder trail you see in the western. You know, with the, the camera. <laughs> So they don't call it quick match for nothing. Now to make sure we didn't have a blue touch paper that we had to light and run! <laughs> <laughs> we used an electric match on the end of these strips of quick match. Uh, these are called squibs in, in the tray. But pick up a bit of um, And I thought these were all going to be sort of put into a box. No, no, no. When it came to actually fusing them, which is the last thing to be done once all the counters are finished, we had fewer people around, about uh, half a dozen of the guys from Fantastic went in, and um, you use a bit of bell wire from BQ, you twist the bits together and you put a bit of gaffer tape around it. Oh, it's technical. Ooh, do you run courses on that? Yes. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so, um, so once we've done that, those, that was put in first. Um, in fact, there's a running that way, in fact, away from the, the quick match, which is right across, the, you'll see it on the video, so you can get the video as well, um, was what called raw match, which was basically gunpowder stuck on the outside bits of string. So that sort of took in the fire, if you like, that way as well as the that way. Uh, then, of course, you need to put the rockets in. Um, I know they look pretty, but actually uh, the colours are going to carefully chosen. They're yellow because that's the colour of black cat fireworks. They, for some reason, they use purple sticks. These are bamboo that have been stained. Everybody that helped out with stacking these fireworks in ended up with purple hands. <laughs> you can tell you can tell who helped out. You know, you've not been doing enough work. Why? Your hands are too clean. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then hopefully, sooner or later, you could press the button and then um, they just think. <laughs> you hope. So that was how we sort of how we did it. Uh, actually, loading them up. This is the start of the loading process. <laughs> we managed to get some recruits, volunteers. <laughs> the local ATC turned up, uh, and they actually started loading things into these frames at around about ten o'clock in the morning. They finished at six in the evening. It took us that long to stack these things. Um, here you can just uh, see that there's the quick match running across. We have three per frame. Would be another one there. Yeah. And then this sort of spider's web on the top is this raw match of just gun pad on the outside of string. Uh, so basically this, these things are designed to produce quite a lot of heat and then they, this would carry it left and right 
underneath all the rockets. Uh, this is the team from Fantastic. Um, I've got to do something about that grin, it's far too cheesy. Uh, now you'll notice this is not a frame, because I was right. You can't get two rockets per square inch. So we had loads left over. So um, with about, what, two hours left to go, um, we nicked some security fencing. <laughs> And then we thought, oh, chicken wire, chicken wire, chicken wire, and um, so what, actually we just phoned up the council, and they just went, fine, bang. Or was that a fine yes, or a fine no? Ten minutes later, this council truck turns up, does a handbrake turn in the middle of the gravel car park, this roll of chicken wire just comes off the back and off we go. <laughs> do without cable ties and <laughs> So just knock this frame up ish, and uh, just stack the extras in there. And you can see here's the, the quick match running around the outside. Uh, I don't like the look of that one. That one's really not going to go in a straight line, is it? <laughs> but by now it's like, let's get rid of these babies, you know? I mean, you know, you've spent eight hours stacking them in the frame and then you discover that you're running short. Oh, please, just whatever, whatever, just get rid of them. Um, then we had the fun of counting. <laughs> yeah, and they all got to be counted twice because we need to know the number accurate to plus or minus naught. Uh, so we had a team of counters in of uh, people that would suffer me as a, a lecturer, <laughs> and somehow the council managed to sweep talks of bank tellers out of their, uh, their bankers. <laughs> Co-op Bank turned up, which is great because, um, in fact, we needed some, you know, somebody recognised to act that can tell numbers. So here they all are, um, using high-tech whiteboard markers to make sure they know which ones they count and which ones they haven't. Uh, you can see the other thing is, I mean, just the entire day, I, I, in fact, I didn't stack very many rockets at all because I was just dealing with media from about, well, it was half past six on my first interview that morning. Um, you can see they're all ready. Actually, this is part of the university video team because everything has to be video and sent up in it. They claim for evidence. No. Cut, paste, instant, Guinness World Records TV show. Do you want to buy it off the shelf? See? It's very cleverly done. You've got to do this for us, you've got to do this for us, and then we'll milk you for it. Nice. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the stance of the guy in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> I might have felt like doing that at the time. Um, but oh, I. I guy from News 24. Right, um, who is that man? <laughs> 56,458, sorry? <laughs> One? Not <laughs> <laughs> that far off the truth. <laughs> In fact, Gary was the first one of the counties to turn up because he volunteered to come early. And what I had him doing was actually dividing these crates up into nine areas using some wool I'd leaked off the wife. Because um, it was sufficiently flexible, it would sort of wiggle its way between the rockets. And so they can count one section of that, make sure it's the right number before they moved on to the next one. And imagine sort of, you know, a crate of nearly 4,000 rockets. And then the other counter differs by one. Mm -hmm. You're going to count the whole lot again? Uh, this that shot does worry me because this is the uh, this is the bank manager from Carlton Bank. He's in charge of the council's bank account. Is it me? I must be getting old, but bank managers are looking. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one of my graduates. Okay. Ah yes, here we see Gary in the prone position beneath <laughs> beneath. No, better perhaps not. Uh, but at least bowing down to us, Sophie Long from the BBC. Uh, I do have to say, Sophie's. Um, an interesting character. <laughs> Immediately after her, I had an interview with a little lad from BBC Newsround. Not quite John Craven anymore, but there you go. Uh, and he had, he took him about three takes to say, uh, let's get this right, firework rocket world record attempt. No, that's right, no, world record rocket attempt, that's right. Fifteen takes. <laughs> <laughs> Have that, have that, have, have. So, if you're off, you see. Yes. Well. 
never mind. You can see that uh, another one of my graduates here, Pip, is just really getting quite... She says that again! <laughs> okay, right. Ah, uh, at which point, we start taking crane crates, we count them all twice. No, nope, still don't know quite how many are in there, because the bank managers run off, we might be here because he didn't bring the calculator with him, and he's actually tallying them up. <coughs> all the fusing's done, at which point all we can do If this works, it should happen automatically. That is ITV satellite truck. My car was just the other side. It was the other side. <laughs> That thing is 12 feet tall, complete with the satellite dish. They said, that, do we have to move the truck? We said, well, it is rather within the exclusion zone. They <laughs> said, well, it'll take us half an hour to find the satellite again. A bit careless, I've lost my satellite. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay if we leave it there? We, a phrase which had become used a heck of a lot during the day was, if you do, don't sue. <laughs> It did actually take about four or five direct hits, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> now that's fine, it's a transit, it can code. Until you realise, right, I mean, one of the things that, I, ITV came on board really early, they were the first landing over the cliff, which we're very grateful. One of the things they did was to organise a little competition, and you could, uh, I didn't know what the competition was, but the prize was to push a plunger, which was the signal for me to push the button, at which point the electric matches were not and eventually go. We got stuck in traffic. <laughs> we were due to blast at 9.30, we just about had everything ready. I mean, the weather during the day had been pouring. 8.30, I'm not joking, on the dock, the wind dropped. Because when we were, you saw in the other photographs, we're on the tarpaulin, this thing's flapping up and down. You know, Sky News always left the negative angles going, oh dear, you know, the, the difference between success and failure could be the thickness of a very thin blue piece of plastic. Thank you. Did you go to the positive angle next time? Oh, obviously not. <laughs> um, but 8.30, the wind dropped, so I stuck my head outside, and the clouds were just like... Then the wind just moved round to our preferred direction, the southwest. I couldn't believe it. So, in fact, we, we was, the original idea was to leave the security fences up. I'm glad we did. There wouldn't be much of the security fences left. Well, <laughs> <laughs> literally, we, you know, 25 past 9, the display manager goes, let's take the fences down. We've got enough lenses up here. I mean, we had ITV, local ITV, sure, but never mind. Local BBC, BBC 20, News 24, and Sky. And then we start going on to radio and print and what have you. We had lots of glass looking at it. We said, let's get these guys to shut the Let's take down the security fences. And it's a 10 minute delay. No, all right. <laughs> Those German press, I'm sorry, but we have approximately a 10 minute delay. And I expect, oh well, it's a nice try. We had it programmed in, you know, 10 minutes' time we're uh, interviewing somebody about their pet mute, never mind buying. Instead of which, went, great! Out come all the mobiles. Studio, studio, give me light in 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't care, he's only a politician, give me light in 10 minutes! <laughs> Where's the heat going to go? <laughs> so the temperature goes up a bit. 
And I should hope Gary remembers from his degree that if you raise the temperature of a reaction, it goes like the clappers. <laughs> and a rocket is designed to accelerate for the first couple of seconds, and it just goes into cruise mode. So those first couple of seconds is what really determines how far it will go, how quickly it moves. Oh, sugar. <laughs> Our exclusion zone was here. It really should have been about over here. <laughs> This is the press. <laughs> now, I've got, it, I've got it on slightly on the DVD. We don't know if the DVD is going to work or not, so I'll tell you now. All these people are earlier on the day come on and go, excuse me, can we have a bit more room? I need to get my ego in here. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, yeah. some of them are great, some of them are not so great. You know what I mean? Uh, so one, one of the freelance photographers was brilliant. He was so good. He said, I've got, look, I'll tell you what. When do you want to see me? I'll book you in. The rest of the fight, but you're on scene. Um, always give me one. One or two that said, Don't worry, we've been in Beirut. We're allowed inside the exclusion zone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you do, you don't sue. Yeah. Right. So we actually had sort of barrier about here, and they sort of crept up a bit over the line, which is great. There's one foot over the line, and no matter what happens, you know, we're in the clear. But all these, the first wave of rockets goes off. And, okay, I like playing around with bands, but this is out of my league. So I'll just have a quick look over at the guys at Fantastic Fireworks. And, go. <laughs> and then the fire in the crater, which was yellow, suddenly switched to white. <laughs> the temperature's just gone up. And they all went... And you can imagine, if, you can imagine this, if you can imagine that's the fireworks, they're all going... <laughs> <laughs> I'm told in the trade it's called you can have your bum on the face. <laughs> They're only little rockets. I mean, if they hit you, and, you know, provided they're actually definitely on you, you're going to get bruised, and that's about it. But it's quite spectacular. And as the second wave take off, if you've got loads of them packed into small crates, there's there's a reasonable possibility of a mini air collision. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not all going to go up, are they? And as we watch this wave, went, ladies and gentlemen, the press, it's time for you. Push it straight towards it.
what an amazing sight that was. My ears are still ringing, my knees are still knocking. I uh, have to say we had to dodge some of the rockets that came straight from the <laughs> fireworks to set this new world record. Our own outside broadcast truck here took a direct hit. But what an amazing spectacle that was. Let's see that again and hear from Rocket Man, Dr. Roy. That's the first one. Here comes the second. Here we go. Study that video. <laughs> 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 
not to wash it. Some members of the press found themselves a little too close for comfort. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one. Um, this is the previous attempt in Jersey. In 1997, yesterday's attempt took place at the 10th anniversary of the okay. British Fireworks Championships. Um, I've got to say that, you know, 22 pages of risk assessment, and nobody thought that rockets only designed to go 100 feet would go at least twice, maybe three times that. Um, nobody got hit. Not even a single bruise. Quite a few people running. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to run when that comes at you. <laughs> <laughs> the video crew from the university, I, I found out afterwards, is scared of fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Zoe takes her kids and she sits on the hoe for the fireworks <coughs> with her knees knocking, waiting for the next bang. Right? She has to video all of this. Actually, the, bit, the tape from her, her camera is brilliant. She, she goes up with the first wave and then comes down with the second wave. And then you get shot of the grass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was found cowering behind the cameraman from the BBC who wasn't going to let go of his camera. <laughs> a bit later on, she's doing, the, she's doing the bit which we need for Guinness, which is to show how few hadn't lifted. Uh, she's videoing it, and she suddenly went, hang on a minute. You know those things I was scared of? Because this firework championship started off yeah. a bit pathetic, really, by comparison, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs>